Hello and welcome. My name is Meepolis, she, they, and this is Literally Graphic. And today we are looking at Dead Man, Dark Mansion of Forbidden Love by Sarah Vaughn, Len Medina, Jose Villarubia, Janice Shang, and Phil Hester. This collected graphic novel edition was published in 2017 by DC Comics. Content notes for murder and abuse. As someone who was very unfamiliar with Dead Man slash Boston brand when I picked up this book, I both felt like it didn't leave me at much of a disadvantage and that I came out of it still not knowing much about Dead Man. Although I guess we do cover the basics of him being a ghost and some of his powers, just not a full rundown of who he is as a superhero. More show rather than tell and I never felt like he was a central character to the book. Looking a bit closer at the creative team, we had Sarah Vaughn on writing. She's also written Sleepless and collaborated on Alex plus Ada, Eternal Empire, and Fresh Romance. On illustrations, we have Lan Medina and Phil Hester. According to his DC profile, the former, quote, Lan Medina is the first Filipino artist to win the prestigious Eisner Award in recognition for his work on fables. He has worked on international comic books including Aria and Stone plus Mutant X for Marvel. End quote. The latter, according to his Goodreads profile, quote, This Eisner Award-nominated artist was born in eastern Iowa where he went on to study at the University of Iowa. His penciling credits include Swamp Thing, Brave New World, Flinch, Ultimate Marvel Team-Up, Clerks, The Lost Scene, The Crow, Waking Nightmares, The Wretch, nominated for the 1997 Eisner Award for Best New Series, Aliens, Purge, and Green Arrow, end quote. Colorist Jose Villarubia's profile on Maryland Institute College of Arts is, quote, Harvey Award winning artist, Internationally known for his comics, color work, and editing, he has also been nominated for the Eisner Award twice and regularly works for all the American comic publishers, Marvel Comics, DC Comics, Dark Horse Publishing, Image Comics, as a colorist and digital painter. End quote. Concluding with lettering, Janice Chang, Wikipedia says, quote, Comics Alliance honored Chiang as Outstanding Letterer of 2016, and comicbook.com gave her the 2017 Golden Issue Award for lettering. In May 2017, Chiang was featured as one of 13 women who have been making comics since before the internet on the blog Women Write About Comics. End quote. What kinds of keywords came to mind? Halloween, haunted, family, legacy, dark magic, and gothic. The Goodreads summary is, quote, Romance, mystery, and evil fill the halls of an old gothic mansion in New England. There's only one person in the world that can bring peace to this place. Boston Brand, a.k.a. Dead Man. When a ghost cannot rest in the place that holds her, the DCU's authority on all things supernatural must help before all is lost. In this tale that evokes the tension of classic romance comics as well as supernatural superhero storytelling, Dead Man, Dark Mansion of Forbidden Love, is a new take on the classic DC hero, end quote. As this summary points to, I wouldn't say it's the most original story in the world, but that it takes the tropes of classic gothic stories and brings them into the 21st century which I think is a skill in and of itself. Although this summary does center Dead Man much more than I felt like the story actually centers Dead Man, definitely a book I would recommend for anyone wanting to get into a Halloween state of mind. The art was a real strong part of the book and one of my favorite parts probably, to be honest. As many people note on Goodreads, both positively and negatively, sigh. Gender and sexuality are parts of this book that really stand out. For better or for worse, the heterosexual relationship is fairly central to the story. There is a bit of a relational triangle going on with Bernice being caught between her boyfriend, Nathan, and her friend, Sam, who she also has a very strong bond with and who don't really seem to get along super well. The way being non-binary and using they, them pronouns is briefly explained felt pretty good, in my opinion. These things are important to name. Although it felt like maybe it trod on the line of being a queer best friend trope. At this point, I feel like Sam was more than just a checkmark off a list of tropes, but trying to look at it objectively, I'm not sure 
how authoritative I could be. There was also obvious racial diversity in our main cast, although I didn't feel like race was something much explored via the story itself. Class, for me, was certainly one of the shortcomings. Well, obviously I read it, but once I started thinking about how much this is a rich people problems story, I was instantly annoyed. (laughs) Ability and disability didn't strike me as something the creator was thinking about. Everyone seems pretty able-bodied. Overall, I ended up feeling like this was a 3 out of 5 stars. Not bad, not great, but good. Bye y'all, keep reading and resist white supremacy. And as always, Literally Graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional land holders, which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation. 